Hello and welcome back to another episode of Ebenezer. In today's episode, Jesus predicts that one of his friends is going to let him down. And also, we make a, a special handprint rooster. But before we get into any of that, it's time for a song. And it's called The Word of the Lord Medley by John Hardwick. Do sing along. Well, what a great song. Now it's time for our Bible story where Jesus predicts that one of his friends is going to betray him. While still at the Last Supper, a dispute also arose among the disciples as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, 
and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Then Jesus asked them, When I sent you without purse, bag or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. And he said to them, But now, if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfilment. The disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That's enough, he replied. Well, what a great Bible story. Now we're going to see if we can figure out what it means for us. And to do that, we're going to need the help of our feathered friend, Zelda. Let's dive into the passage. What does Jesus mean about greatness and serving? This is a message that Jesus has spoken on quite a lot, and we've covered it in quite a few episodes now. But it's a really important point, that as followers of Jesus, we're called to be like him, and not chase after greatness like the rest of the world, and be all high and mighty about things. Instead, we're called to serve, just like Jesus, who even though he is our king, came down to serve us on the cross. Being servant-hearted is what makes people truly great. Will Peter really betray Jesus? Yes, sadly Peter, who's also known as Simon, does betray Jesus. Even though Peter and Jesus have been through so much together and are really good friends, Peter will still turn his back on him. We'll look at it more closely when it happens in a future episode, but Peter really messes up, and he's really sorry about it. It goes to show us that no human's perfect. Peter was one of the disciples, and even he made mistakes. And we should take comfort in that. We all do wrong things, and the great news is that we can turn back to Jesus, and he will forgive us. And Jesus mentions uh, about them being tested as well. And Jesus' expression about sifting wheat, it might be a bit confusing. But imagine it like a giant sieve which keeps in the good stuff and lets the bad stuff fall out. Jesus is saying that the disciples are all going to be tested and they might not do well, but they will be better after it. Often bad things can happen in our lives too, and we can make mistakes and do wrong things, but we can learn from those to become better. What does Jesus mean about being numbered with the transgressors? Here, Jesus is quoting from Isaiah, uh, chapter 53, verse 12, which says this, Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. It's an important, if uh, slightly confusing, old prophecy about Jesus, which predicts the death that Jesus knows he is about to endure. A transgressor is a word we use to mean someone who's done something wrong, someone who has transgressed, they've done wrong. And so the prophecy from Isaiah tells us that while Jesus will be great and be king of the world at the right hand of God, he will achieve this greatness by pouring out his life and dying for all of us. He will be rejected and treated badly, put to death, but it's all for the sake of us and all the things that we've done wrong. Uh, and in doing so, it will take away all that wrongdoing, all that sin, so that we can all be friends with God again. In our passage, Jesus is quoting this to Peter to try to get him to understand that bad stuff's about to happen, that him and his disciples are going to be treated badly, 
uh, by the people in charge, but that this is all to fulfill what's been written so that Jesus can complete his main task. Why does Jesus tell them to bring back some swords? Well, Jesus knows exactly what's about to happen, and he's been predicting it for ages while he's been on earth, but his disciples haven't really understood it. He's warning them that he's about to be arrested and put to death, and that all of the followers are going to be in trouble for associating with Jesus. Um, when Jesus was still around, he told them, uh, he told his disciples even not to bother taking any stuff with them. They didn't have bags or money or anything like that. They just went from town to town preaching the good news, but they were always safe and well provided for. But now Jesus is going to have to go away and things are going to be different and tough for his followers. So he's telling them it's time for a change. They need to be a bit more careful. Uh, they're going to need bags and things to take care of themselves. However, this doesn't mean that Jesus is saying God won't provide for them anymore. We know that that isn't true and that God always provides for his followers. Um, and Jesus also isn't saying that they need to get really well armed and go off fighting everyone. Um, we see at the end of the passage that Jesus even gets a little exasperated when they're too eager with the swords. Um, and we'll see in a later passage uh, that even when people are threatening him, Jesus tells his disciples not to hurt anyone. What does this mean for our lives? I think one of the main takeaways from this passage is that we see examples of the disciples making lots of mistakes. But what's really encouraging is that Jesus knows they're going to make these mistakes and Jesus knows that they'll still be forgiven and they'll do good afterwards. When we mess up and things go wrong, it's important for us to say sorry and ask for forgiveness. But we can also still hold close and know that Jesus still loves us and wants us to do good work for him. And so we too can turn back and be encouraged to keep on doing the tasks that Jesus wants us to do. What are we going to learn about next time? Next time, we look at the moment where Jesus is arrested. Now it's time for the memory verse. Today's memory verse comes from Luke chapter 22, verse 32. And it's Jesus saying this. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So let's say that again. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Now it's time for the craft. Today, we're making a special hand-painted rooster. For today's craft, you will need some plain paper, a paint palette. If you don't have one of these, you can use the lid of an old Tupperware container, a paintbrush, some paints, a cup of water to wash your brush in, and finally, a marker pen. Now let's get cracking with the craft. Today, we're making a rooster craft because of what Jesus said to Peter. So our first step is to put some rooster colors in our paint palette. You can choose different ones if you like, but I'm going to be using yellow, red, green, blue, and orange. So I'm putting a little of each of them into my paint palette. Now for the messy part. Take your non-dominant hand, and for me that's my left hand, and cover your palm and your thumb with yellow paint. You could probably do this without a brush, but I'm using a brush for mine as it's much easier and a bit less messy. Next, take a different paint colour, orange for example, and cover your index finger with paint, like I'm doing here. Repeat this with your other colours on your other fingers, just like I'm doing. You want to be pretty quick, as we don't want the paint to dry. But eventually your hand should be covered, just like mine. Now it's time to stamp our hands down onto our paper. Make sure you press down properly and try not to move it side to side too much. Now we should be left with this colourful shape. Take a moment to go and properly wash your hand before we continue with our craft. Right, my hand is all clean now, so it's time to add the finishing touches to our rooster. Take some red paint and paint on a beak and a crest for your rooster, just like I'm doing here. Add on a little eye too. Finally, use your marker pen to draw on some legs. And now our rooster is all finished. Doesn't he look great? What a great craft! Do send through any photos of your crafts or any questions to the email in the description below. But for now, it's time for a song. And it's called We Will Follow by Michael Tinker. Do sing along. Jesus said.
So we're going to end in a short prayer. If you'd like to make it yours, please join in with the Amen at the end. Dear Lord, thank you that you're a God of grace and forgiveness. We're sorry when we do things wrong, but thank you that you give us the chance to make things better. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all we have time for. Do tune in next time when we look at the moment where Jesus gets arrested. But for now, that's bye from me. And it's bye from Zelda. And we'll see you in the next video.